Right, so um, it is the 2nd of May in the UK today, um, which for a lot of people is a day where we go voting. And um, I've got Richard with me today, uh, Richard Shakespeare of Workplace Workplace Diversity Solutions. Uh, And Richard, I think you've just been to vote, is that right? I have indeed, Ian, yes. Okay, and how was that for you today? Uh, It was an interesting experience for me today. Uh, I had trouble accessing the polling station in the first instance. Okay, and we probably should say to people, Richard, that's because you sometimes use a wheelchair, is that right? Yes, I took my um, mobility scooter with me today because it was only down the road and much quicker than driving and, and is better for the environment. Okay, good, good. So um, were, you doing a, were you voting for the Green Party today then? Is the envir- environment something that's important to you? And the Green Party wasn't actually an option for me. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, my... Because obviously with, with the local elections, you could only vote for the ones that were available. Okay, well, there's a little, if, if you're from the Green Party and you happen to be listening to this podcast, you've missed out on Richard's vote in Sinfin. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that's something to, to remember. Sorry, anyway, we're digressing, Richard. We're supposed to be talking about access here, aren't we? And there's me blathering on. Um, so, yeah, t- let's carry on with your story. Yeah, so I, I went to um, vote and, and went to the polling station. It's the same polling station I've been to probably for about the last 10 or 12 years, um, but they've made some internal changes to the, the library in which the polling station is, is housed. Um, so this time, instead of going through the main entrance, which is fully accessible and wide enough doors and so on, uh, you had to go through a fire exit at the back, which wasn't wide enough uh, for me to get into. Okay, so what they'd they'd sort of just moved everything round the back of the library, kind of thing. Yeah, you, there there was plenty of signage to say it was this way, and it was a, a new thing, and and you had to take your ID and so on. Um, but it was a very small, um, sort of almost a side door that that was a, a fire exit that you were supposed to go to at the rear of the library, um, which bizarrely took you into the same room that you would have voted in had they not have made the um, internal changes to the library. Right. Okay, and so that was a, a bit, and we're trying to see that, so we're imagining um, Richard um, in his, um, on his mobility scooter. Um, is that right, Richard, or were you in the wheelchair? Yeah, no, I'd gone on the um, mobility scooter um, just because it, it's easier than getting the chair out and, and so on. So you're getting to this door around the back, a little bit of difficult access, and then actually it's not, it's not very wide, not quite wide enough for you to get in. It's, no, I don't think even if I had gone in the wheelchair, I'm not 100% confident he would have fitted um, through through the door. I think the other problem you have at the polling station in that scenario is actually alerting someone to the fact that you are there because there isn't somebody stood by the door. They're all inside, uh, sat around the tables with the addresses and so on. Right. OK. Um, so how, how, how did you overcome that? Uh, well, I, I attempted about a 400-point turn to see if I could get through the um, fire exit door, and, and after knocking the, the polling station signs over and the make sure you brought your ID signs... and So you created utter chaos, Richard, at the, at the polling station this morning? <laughs> Pre- pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No. Um, not intentionally, I, I must add. Um, but so I had to wait for a member of the public to come out, who then went back in to find uh, a member of the the polling team to say, look, this person can't actually um, access the um, library. I think it, it's well, it's something I find quite often with access is that somebody's thought about it, so they've gone to the effort of putting a sign up to say disabled access this way, and they've made sure that the door has a ramp to it to get over the step, but. No one's actually in the real world tried it and then gone, oh, well, actually, it's not possible. Because as, as well as the door being quite narrow, they'd blocked half of the space up with all the signs and things to tell you it was an official polling station. So it was a kind of, someone's made half an effort but not really thought it all through. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there's a, so it's in, it's in people's minds. Um, but I suppose it sounds like that actually, the, the the experience just isn't there for people, so they don't necessarily know. They they have a, this idea that the, in, things need to be accessible, but they don't necessarily know exactly how you make that accessible. Yeah, and I think also it, it's you've got to think about the reason that the person's accessing the building. So in that instance, I obviously went to cast my vote, which is a, you know I think is quite an important thing, but it's also quite a private thing. Um, 
So you're, you're almost sort of drawing attention to the fact that this person wants to come in and, and access the building because now we've got to go through a completely different route, um, move all the furniture, open doors that people weren't even sure if they did open or how they might go about opening them and, and were they wide enough, you know, the internal doors. Um, but then, of course, when you get to the, the sort of booth to do your, your vote, um, it, it's not really designed for somebody to sit there in a mobility scooter. So you end up taking up half the room and stopping everybody else. And, and then, of course, you once you've finished, you've got to put your, your sort of voting slip in the box and everything else. But that, the, the whole process just hasn't been thought through for what do we do if someone comes in who, who perhaps isn't as mobile as, as some of the other visitors. It, it was almost as if they sort of made the effort to put the signs there and show that they were willing, but they just hadn't kind of done a process map of what might happen. Right. Okay. So, um, and did you, I don't know if I've missed that, but did you actually get to make your vote eventually? I did, yes. Uh, they man managed to take me on a, a right um tour of the library i've seen bits of the library i didn't even know existed okay every cloud um, and, yeah and, yeah and, and it probably took um i don't know maybe 10 or 15 minutes whereas you know with the, the previous layout of the building i'd have probably been in and out in in sort of two or three minutes um but i i was almost sort of anticipating what happens if they can't get me to this room or, or you know what what are the rules then what happens can i just you know put my cross in the box in the middle of the library or does it need to be you know in front of somebody or in a specific room so it kind of just conjured up some interesting thoughts for me in terms of what what actually happens if i you know i can't access the room because obviously i still want to cast my vote and i have that right but but where does this conversation go if for some reason in the next two minutes that there's an obstacle that we can't navigate round? Yeah, now that's interesting. And I wonder if other people have had those experiences today, similar to yourself. I, I bet you're not the only person um, in this entire country that, that's had that experience. And I wonder if they've, you know, if, if they if anybody has in fact had, had missed their vote because of this or um i mean like you, you raise a good question about the booths it, is that a law is that a fundamental law that, that that they need to have that private space in order to make their vote i would assume and i don't know but i would assume that it, it, it that it is because it's a very there's a lot of legislation around polling and how how that's done um so that's a really interesting question and i wonder leaving it there um if anybody listening to this has had similar experiences you might not be listening today or today is the day of, of polling in the uk but you might be listening to this um a few weeks later and and you and you might have had experiences yourself and if you have then please do get in touch um and let us know what your experiences was maybe we can get you on the show okay so um thanks richard and um thanks everyone for listening